They are Broadway stars and their besties. Tony winner Matt Doyle and Bonnie Milligan. He's in Little Shop of Horrors. She's in Kimberly Akimbo. Let's check back in with Paul Wontorek. So here we are, yes. Matt and Bonnie. So good to see you both. Hi. And look, we're in Times Square. This is where you work, and Broadway. It's our favorite place to be. I do remember, though, when I was like 15 years old, driving through here and calling my best friend in California and being like, I just drove by Aida. Aww. You know, like just freaking out. Yes. And and now to be able to say that we actually are a part of this and yeah. that we work here is really overwhelming. I try to remind myself of that every time that, you know, like somebody throws you over into the street. <laughs> oh, you're right down on 45th Street, yep. the Booth Theater, Kimberly That's Akimbo, the acclaimed. Right there. So you're on 45th Street, Damn, and yeah. on that same block, you were in company, won a Tony yes. Award on that. That's a good block for it's you, too. It's a great <laughs> block. It's a great block. We love 45th Street. We love 45th Street. <laughs> and Matt, uh, you're off Broadway, but you're I'm just off Broadway, you're, you're in the Broadway close. district. Yeah. You're in Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, playing we consider Seymour. it Broadway light. But you two are actually really good friends, which is why we brought you together. I wanted to dig into that a little oh, bit. Yeah. But okay. also, I wanted to, you know, there's like some holiday holiday shopping yes. at Times Square. So like, let's let's let's, let's head up uh, let's head up and sit down and and chat a little yes. bit. Cool. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's yeah. walk this way. Where did you guys first meet? What's the origin story? We did a show called Jasper and Deadland together on the Upper West Side in a church. In a church, yeah. yeah. But also there was just one day, I think it was on the first day of rehearsals, where somebody was like, can anyone sing that? And Bonnie was like, I can. And then it was like, can you sing it a little higher? Why don't you actually option up here? And she just like wailed. <laughs> Do that, sure. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna, okay, great. And I, was I like, just sat on the side like. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that when you're a performers in in the city, people come in and out of your life, and you do shows, and sometimes it's just a one day reading, and sometimes right. it's a one year run, and there's all sorts of relationships. But what do you think made you two gel? Because you're you're real friends. We are real friends. Yes, I think um, I think being real with one another. It's a you know it's a difficult business. There's a lot of competition between people. There's a lot of uh, creating a family and then losing a family, mm -hmm. and that's a very strange part about this. You have to immediately be friends with your company and work with them and understand them. And there's just a few along the way that you really, really, really get attached to, to the point that that carries through to your day-to-day -day life. And Bonnie and I, I think, just immediately connected mm -hmm. on a much deeper level that went beyond the room. In the jokes that we shared, in the uh, not having to say anything to one another but a look across the room and yeah. understanding each other fully, and, uh, and also in the support that we found in one another and we knew how to lift each other up and I think we still do that for each other mm -hmm. like I, I know when Bonnie's going through something and I don't even need to like ask her Fact. yeah yeah even sometimes I'll send a text be like well how are we doing I know and I'm like whoa how did you <laughs> like it's like really like uh, are you surveilling me <laughs> like it's like creepy I'm like I'm really, behind you and I'm like oh god <laughs> okay well I'm awake now and I don't have a lot of friends I am a, like I'm not a so Social close person. Guy, yeah. I'm a very close to the chess person in terms of like my actual like deep, deep personal life. And Bonnie, I was like, come in. <laughs> I was like, Let's and then I was friends. like, you're not releasing me, just so you know. He was like, great. I didn't want to. I'm like, good. <laughs> well, I'm assuming you know, especially the last few years, it's been tough. Oh. It's been tough to be an actor. So tell me how you lean on each other in those times. I mean, especially during the pandemic, I was. Uh, home with my mother in Ohio for 11 months and uh, my my dad passed at the beginning of it so I had been back and forth when it looked bad news bears <laughs> I just <laughs> stayed and I said I think I should just wait it out in case they shut down airports and that turned into 11 months and I texted him every day every single day every day yeah I mean we had uh, I, I still find pandemic videos on my phone and it's videos to Bonnie or videos that I've saved of hers that yeah. are, are really you just singing in your garage, <laughs> <laughs> garage. great acoustics <laughs> great acoustics yeah. you've got a white claw in hand uh -huh, and <laughs> yeah for sure for <laughs> didn't sure we all? didn't we all oh man and uh, yeah I think we we survived on each other and survived on giving each other hope and lifting yeah. each other up. I mean, it was the most depressing and confusing time of all of yeah. our lives. And we had just watched so many things that meant the world to us, whether it be our job or our family, disappear yeah. and, and fall away from us. And I think Bonnie and I uh, definitely leaned on each other 
a, a great deal throughout all of that. Oh, yeah. And everything from like sharing a funny meme or something to like saying, I'm having a panic attack right now because my mm -hmm. mother just said, you're alone, you have no one, <laughs> which happened. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, just like confronted with so much beyond like, you know, I put everything into my career and being like, well, now you have no one. So is that okay? And you're like, ah, like having to go into the other room and be like, I'm actually having a panic attack right now. And, then, um, and it, he's yeah. had them and I, we both have had them that, we don't have to deal with, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm having yeah. irrational thoughts, but like somebody else that just knows. I called Bonnie <laughs> on uh, the first preview back. So company was a fascinating uh, return just because we all had a lot of trauma that we were going through and it just revealed itself in different ways. And I do have a panic attack disorder and uh, there are two people that I call first, my mother and Max. First he calls and I answer, I go, hey! <laughs> and I was like, I'm having a panic attack. I need your help. I called I called several other people, but no, <laughs> no one else would answer. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, okay, okay, let's just breathe together. <laughs> and after and I know his list is not long, so it really made me laugh enough to tell him later. I was like, I will say how you opened up is that no one else would pick up. Uh, and he was like, that was two people. I was like, I know, but how I came out was so funny. Hey, being number three in someone's life is pretty, it's pretty like, good. That's just so really rude. good, but just right off no the No one else would pick up. No one else would pick up. Okay, cool. Well, I did, so let's do this. So tell me, what do you say to a fellow performing friend who's having a panic attack at the first preview of well, company? Well, as someone who hmm. has gone through them, I just said, let's breathe together. Yeah. You know, and I said, you are here right now because what happens is your brain just starts going on all these different scenarios and mm -hmm. it gets freaky that it's like hey right here we're here right now like just breathe with me and I just we just started breathing together as and, I just sobbed uncontrolled. and I'm like it's okay okay let's just do it again deep and that's kind of what we did for a while was breathe until I could hear his breathing kind of come to a center and I'm like you're great this is normal so you know there's no judgment and I'm like this is a hundred percent normal you have been through a lot it's okay. And so I think just breathe. that's something that we also have always connected on. Bonnie and I don't judge each other. No. We're able to say everything to each other. And that is really important in a business that's all about rejection and your own insecurities and confusion about uh, how you're presenting yourself and, and who you are and what people are going to think. And we're able to say all of the kind of the things that we keep inside and things that we don't want to admit and uh, and we can connect on that and the, I've never ever once felt a sense of judgment from Bonnie. There's times I can also text and be like, I know this is irrational, but here's what I feel. I need to get it out yeah. of yeah. me. Because if I don't, then I'm gonna sure. spiral. And so I'm like, but here's what I'm going through right now and I'm finding that now, especially as I'm going into this season where it's just like, hey, I know this is a little crazy, but this is what I'm feeling. He's like, this is normal. Um, I went through this too, so that we can like, And I usually boards. respond like 50% 50, 50 of this is irrational and false, and the other 50% might be true. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. this is how I dealt with it, yeah. Yep. Yes, because let's face it, you get presented a fantastic role yeah. in a fantastic mm -hmm. show. We all just saw Matt win his Tony Award. Yeah, crazy. So thrilling. And you are playing Aunt Deborah yeah. in Kimberly Kimbo, and you won the Lortel Award off yeah. Broadway. You've been nominated for other awards. Yeah. So suddenly there's a lot of attention, mm -hmm. yes. right? And suddenly yeah. there's extra pressure. You don't get COVID, don't miss this show. You <laughs> yeah. never know who's gonna be in the house. So it is a lot to uh -huh. handle. I guess Matt could probably write a book about it. You know, and I said to Bonnie at the, as, I watched this uh, this moment kind of explode for her, especially um, when the show opened, and just she's so outrageously brilliant in it, and it's such a yeah. phenomenal role for her. I cannot really begin to describe how insane all of this gets, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, please just come to me with absolutely everything because yeah. I didn't really have that. And I, I did have to be careful yeah. uh, in my at my theater and you don't want to walk into the theater asking people constantly, like, yeah. what do I do? You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tony. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, give me more advice, you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to kind of bestow a little bit of uh, the knowledge of, of that insanity onto what she's going through right now yeah. Yeah. and all the attention she's getting. <laughs> so what was that like watching Matt oh win my gosh. on that crazy night in June? So 
emotional. I mean, like when they did the Tony nomination announcements, I was stuck in Mexico with COVID. Yeah. And I had like, it's the funniest. If you look at my Instagram, I did a post of excitement for him and it ends with a video of me with the squeakiest velociraptor voice. <laughs> Being like, ah, and two sobs. Matt Doyle. <laughs> and FaceTimed him and I could like barely speak because we have, oh, I might cry now. Like we have been through so much together for so many years and I've seen him work so hard. Yeah. Um, and I've seen him like take jobs that didn't pay as much because it stretched him as an actor. And he just wanted so desperately to show everything that's within him, which is so much. And sometimes people are like, you're so pretty, which he is, oh, but like, God. he's, but you are, you know what I mean? Like some people put us in boxes and like, you're so much more than that. And I think maybe that's where we've connected to. People want to put us in a certain place and like, we're like, no, 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 let me show you more. And so I've seen him take risks in his career, stretch himself. We've been through the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. I couldn't be more proud. And also like everything, like <laughs> it just, it's like, oh, thank God that like there's good in the world. Like we are awarding like this human, like it should be awarded. And I know you've been waiting for Bonnie to have a moment like Bonnie's she's like having right now. The hardest worker I've ever, ever met in my entire life. I know that we connect on that because we both are here because we love it more than anything. Yeah. And get very frustrated with uh, other people that are in the industry that maybe are here for the wrong sure. reasons and don't, uh, don't have the same just like in, insane love and passion that that we feel for for the craft and you connected for, on that yeah too. we connect yeah. on that but also i've watched bonnie overcome so many different hurdles that a lot of other women in this industry don't necessarily have to overcome bonnie is just one of the most gorgeous people i've ever met in my life but isn't necessarily a type that is going to fit into the you know the ingenue and has had to go up against so many prejudices from not just the community but also from the uh, the, the journalistic side of the community mm -hmm. and and just ha has bravely faced all of it and proven that it is not your size or or what your type is that it ultimately is your heart and your talent and that's what she's doing right now with Aunt Deborah and that's so exciting and I just I, I watch her just just break down barriers watching her sing beautiful a song about being absolutely gorgeous and a princess on stage during um, head over heels was was thrilling and now just to see her owning the stage right now and uh, the entire community recognizing her worth and her power is is uh, there's nothing like it you both live extremely openly about yourselves and you both are just very like this is who I am this is what I have to offer and so I think you probably connect on that on that level too I mean yeah, yeah. we're blunt yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're blunt people yeah. yeah and I cannot believe you just made me cry so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Matt, you're playing Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors. I am. Which I know is a dream it. role. And yes. I'm, I'm I know you love doing it with Lena Hall, but I'm pretty sure you would also. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I feel like you we have a dream it. on we have dream. We've discussed it. Years. For years we've yeah. been talking about it. Still looking to yeah. make that happen. We need yeah. To make it happen. But, but she, like, please, like, no, not anytime no, soon. No, I don't want to close my show. <laughs> She's busy. Let's put She's that busy. in the world. She's busy. She's busy. She's booked. Keep her busy. Yeah. <laughs>